That's all they want. They've been up for like 36 hours. And with that, hi, I'm Jason Russell from Critical Dice. Welcome to the Fable 42, where we build community through friendship, gaming, and as you're about to see, chaos. Uh, you're watching the Duke City Chronicles, a Monster of the Week game set in my hometown of Albuquerque, New Mexico, because this place is so buck wild, I have to change very little. Uh, you can watch us live on twitch.tv slash Fable42, Friday nights, 6 p.m. Eastern, or 3 p.m. Pacific, or in the holiest of all time zones, 4 p.m. Mountain. Uh, we're going to start our giveaway here in the live chat, uh, exclamation point critical to join that. Uh, if you haven't already liked the channel, go ahead and do that. And if you get a free subscription uh, to a Twitch channel of your choice from Amazon Prime, you can spend it anywhere, but we sure would like for you to spend it here. Um, with that, we want to get right back into this because we are really hyped. Uh, let's go ahead and do our player character intros as customary. Let's start with Bridget. Hi guys, I'm Bridget. Uh, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at string underscore theories underscore. Um, and uh, I play Suki Buchanan, is a 70 year old heavily tattooed art professor at the University of New Mexico. She's the spooky playbook and she talks back to the dead for a living. Well done. And riding let's, a bike. <laughs> like riding a bike. Uh, uh, Gates, Stacks. Ha! Hi, everybody. I am Stax, also known as the Judgy GM on all the socials. And I play Gates, also known as GW, also known as... Uh... <laughs> I can't say it with a straight face. It's funny. It's, it's great. Because uh... <laughs> you know what you did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I actually might have just like slid that one underneath during character Yeah. Creation. Anyway. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm complicit there as well. It's also my fault. <laughs> So it was a combined effort. Speaking of combined, I am the monstrous playbook. Ooh, transition. And I share a brain noggin now with Eubank, also known as the passenger. And I do a lot of weird stuff. Indeed. Uh, also in the game. Uh, Anne, um, how do you go next? What's up, fam? I'm Anne. You can find me on Dusty Wings Illustration on the gram. Otherwise, you can find me here on Mondays with Crypt Creatures, which is another spooky game um otherwise yeah i play fiona average little demon lady <laughs> from the spell slinger playbook excellent and whose mouth is totally not full gw not mine hey how <laughs> <laughs> gw you guys can find me on ig and twitter under gw 5 two b's two zeros uh, also find me here um also on mondays with Anne now until perhaps i die <gasps> on crypt creatures and here fridays on duke city where i play Quavon Whispers, aka Q, the Divine Playbook, and the team's angsty, edgy angel boy. And he is ready for anything. I mean, you ate that muffin so fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's trained his entire life for this. And I'm Jason Russell. You can find me at Critical Dice on Instagram and Heaven Help Us TikTok. And if I've done my dates correctly, the only thing I have to announce is on Saturday, October 29th. Uh, I am running one of my uh, regular games as the DM for Quincy's Tavern on his channel. And for Halloween on the 29th, we are playing Monster of the Week with a very special guest star, GW, who is playing Quavon Whispers in that <laughs> game as well. So tune into that. That's going to be on a Saturday the 29th at 7 p.m. Eastern or 4 p.m. Uh, uh, Pacific. And so, uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll be obnoxious about it when that happens, so you'll check on the Discord. But uh, I think with that, um, it's time to get into our episode, a brand new episode, the last episode, episode 14, The Trestle. It's an amazing place. Most people have no idea where it is. But we're okay with that. We've got mountains, rivers, deserts, and over 300 days of sunshine, and some of the most diverse and wonderful people you'll ever meet. It's a great place to live, and I definitely encourage you to try it. But we also have our dark side, our own ghosts, secrets, and legends. Most of them are true. For thousands of years, people have been living here and dying here. This is Albuquerque, but it goes by many names. The 505, 
Dr. Burke, my favorite is the Duke City. These are the Duke City Chronicles. Previously on the Duke City Chronicles, the team has gotten the information from what remains on the mortal plane from the Sisters Weird of how to defeat, uh, not Eubank, Maxwell. Um, they come up with a plan to get help from the various people they know through their adventures and to stop the energy being taken from the ley lines, stop the man Maxwell himself, and stop the uh, focus, uh, which is the hypercomputing brain from Avi. Uh, as they get ready to leave the hair salon, they see Chet still there at the Mustang, and his current former boss of the Obsidian Order, Ambrose Pierce, who is there to talk to Fiona. Um, which is where we're going to pick things up. As you guys turn around, standing there behind you somehow is a very dapper looking 12 year oldish uh, lad uh, in a dark black suit, uh, well combed hair, who looks at Fiona and says, Ah, Miss Malik, I've been meaning to ask you some questions. Yeah, I figure so. <laughs> Chiefly, where have you been? It's a long story. Mm. Um, I've been, well, I've been here. For 80 years. For 80 years, yeah. Skipped a few. Um, met, th met these folks and ended up leaving my timeline back to this one. Ah, that would make sense. It also makes sense that you'd be caught up with these people. Hmm. More and more is falling into place. Well, I'm glad you're safe. However, your services are needed with the Obsidian Order. If you're ready, we can return now. And I kind of look at him and I look at everyone else. My services are needed here. I have a feeling it's a little bit more urgent. You've been out of pocket for quite some time. I'm not confident in your ability to decide what is and isn't the most priority. It is something of our purview to prioritize threats to the world. I'm sure you've had many adventures and camaraderie, and Stockholm and all that, but I really must insist. You still are in, in the service of the Order, are you not? I am. I am. But as an agent of a, of the Obsidian Order, I'm obligated to stay with these folks because if I don't, the whole world ends. If I could interject for just a moment. Miss um, Well, um, we've had a bit of a rough time within the last 36 hours. Um, I suggest if we're going to talk this over, which I think we should, because I, I, I think you should hear us out about our credible threat to the world. Um, would you like to come back to my house? There's coffee and soft surfaces to sit upon. We'll have a civilized conversation at Sunset House. Mm, I'm always one for polite conversation with polite company. However, I'm more of a tea drinker, as you might imagine. I got tea. I got sweet tea, I got hot tea, I got chai tea. I have no interest in forcing a conflict here. Chet has briefly told me that uh, you're doing good work, and I trust that. I propose we do have a conversation, but I will give you something of a reprieve. We will meet at a neutral location, Noon, I was going to say tomorrow, but I suppose it's today. Noon, later today, after you've rested, all of you, and you'll be able to look at Chet, <laughs> at the frontier. Are we in agreement? Sounds fine to me. Miss Malik, I expect... Your attendance? 
I'll be there. Excellent. Until then, good evening. And he walks away towards an alley, walks into the shadows, and he's gone. God, he is just the creepiest little thing. All right, You're everybody. Like, I know, right? I mean, <laughs> listen, I like working for them and all, but like, yeah, like sometimes like you can't just like walk out of a meeting like a normal person through a door. You can always like walk. Oh, okay. I'm getting kind of cold. I'm like, although curly fly, cur- curly flies, fries are like ice cold and like soggy, but I'm like still panic eating them. <laughs> yeah, stress eating, yes. <laughs> yeah. Which is the intended purpose of curly fries. Have have yeah. never spoke up to him ever in my life like that before. <laughs> no, there's a version of you who has, but you're not her. Right. <laughs> Different timeline. All right. So everyone's headed back to Sunset House or just those who live there? I mean, I think everybody could come if you want to have a washer dryer if you're worried about your clothes or I could stop off and grab clothes. We should grab Chet some pants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like, yeah, that's that's probably a good idea. Just a little little drafty, drafty. I mean, (sighs) I I don't mind stopping at everybody's house if you want to pack an overnight bag and then we can all just sort of crash at sunset. I would say maybe a, a couple nights crash at sunset because we're, you know, planning on saving the world and stuff. Keeper. Yes. From where we are right now, when we get on the road, does Suki have to pass by my place to get to her place from where we are right now? Uh, no, but you're maybe only two minutes away from your house by car. Oh, by car. Um, Suki, I... Uh... I definitely need to at least walk through the door of home just so people know that I'm home. But briefly after that, I can meet you back at your place. Absolutely. Sure. That sounds fine to me. I'll drop you off. Okay. How about uh, Gates? If you need to show up anywhere, can I stop by anywhere to grab you some change of clothes or anything? Uh, I have a change of clothes in my car, which is at yours currently, so as long as I can get back. Um, Perfect. Give me time to heal Fiona as well, or attempt to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Have we seen where Gates lives yet? No. (laughs) I'm gonna look over. Hey, Gates, where do you live? In Albuquerque? Yo, we all live in Albuquerque, Gates. No, some people live in Rio Rancho. <laughs> Why Are is you... there a dig at me all of a sudden? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I only have an office in Rio Rancho. <laughs> so, wait, do you stay in the dorms on campus or? No, I have an apartment that I rent out. Why are you suddenly all interested in my place of residence? Making sure you're somewhere safe. Oh. Well, why don't you just say that? Quit being like stalker Wait. level. I'm going to teleport in when you're like. <laughs> exactly. That's how it sounds, Q. That's not how you. That's how you made it sound. I no, didn't say any of that. That's one of the ways it sounded. Wow. <laughs> Chet, were you living at the at the base? Do you have clothes? Uh. Oh, uh, that's a really good point, actually. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure all my stuff at the base was destroyed. Uh, I've got some more clothes uh, at the, at my, like, and he, like, kind of looks like private sanctum at the comic book shop. Um, but, uh, I mean, that's on the way. Uh, if we take Central, um, I can grab clothes there, yeah. And, okay. some, and some gear, actually. Yeah. Lots yeah, of gear. gear. We yeah. would, as much gear as you can grab, I think, would be helpful. Mm, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Let's do that. All right. Are you talking about astro zombies? Yeah, yeah. There's a little like empty like building kind of attached to it. Uh, I know the owners, um, and uh, I have a little like uh, private sanctum there that I kind of you know that the order doesn't really know about, and that's kind of where I was hiding out until you know they were dealt with. So the the evil ones, not the regular ones. Oh, the okay. the the overtly evil ones. Yeah, anyway. 
Not the morally gray ones. <laughs> He's like, mm. all right. Well, uh, everybody get in, buckle up. We'll start going, and I'll, you know, drop off Q, you know, and do the whole thing. Yeah. So you guys get to set a set house, no problem. I think Q, um, you're walking through the front door, kind of like the back door, closer to your bedroom, porting in. What are you doing? You're muted, bro. <laughs> I'm walking in th- through the front door. Okay. Yeah, it's it's uh, around 2 a.m. still, 2.30 maybe. Uh, everyone's asleep, I think. House is pretty dark. Um, and uh, you, I don't think you've been home since the last reality shift, um, or maybe once. But everything looks as it should, normal. You talked to your dad once on the phone when you were at the Balloon, Balloon Museum a couple episodes back. Uh, and, um, there is the only light on you can see is kind of down the hall in your grandma's room. Uh, otherwise, uh, in like a, like a, you know, a light next to the bed or something, kind of a faint light. But other than that, uh, everything's quiet and as it should be. I'll walk uh, down the hall to where I see the light coming from my grandma's room. Yeah. Uh, and she's sitting in bed, uh, like with a nightcap on, you know, get her mm-hmm. hair just right. And she is, uh, is, uh, reading a uh a book a hardback and she's in bed up to you know her waist a little light on the side she kind of looks up and sees you and smiles and kind of waves uh since uh your grandma hasn't been able really to speak since the stroke about you know more than a decade ago or more about a decade ago i just peek in i wave back at her and i say um good night grandma or good morning i guess and she looks at the clock looks at you gives you a like a look it was it's been a long day uh see you in the morning and i'm gonna close the door <laughs> i'm gonna go up to my room <laughs> she kind of shakes her head but as she does in the door is closed she kind of like shakes her head with pursed lips and it's like and just kind Aww. of smiles and keeps reading and Aww. i assume you head to bed gita yeah right. i i head to my room uh to do all the the things and of course pack my bag to port to so right. yeah i think with all of that you you're gonna get to the sunset house about the same time they get back uh i think you guys all pile out of the car and open the door just as gw is opening the door from the inside uh and you guys are oh hey and uh suki you can see kind of over his shoulder that there's already a kettle going and rosalita's there just kind of like you know getting it going and pulling cups down uh kind of floating <laughs> down to the uh to the counter she's always kind of ready to help out wherever she can uh yeah i'm gonna be like rosalita warm milk all around <laughs> and like sort of start bustling around and like putting nutmeg and cinnamon and the like night night milk for everybody and like you know make sure everybody sleeps nice and deep and has good dreams nice yeah, uh, Chet is like, oh, that sounds great, and walks over. And the, the pants that he's chosen are like <laughs> 1980s, like parachute pants, like jams, you know, uh, like blue Bless with like heart, all Chet. these little, like 80s, like neon kind of squiggles on them and stuff. And he was like, you know, he, he said it was the only thing that was clean, but he seems really comfortable in them. Uh, and uh, he takes a, a cup of milk and uh, kind of eyes the burner a little bit, like, huh. It's like looking yeah. around for like smart switches and stuff. Chet, you ain't met Rosalita, have you? No, who's a, that's Fiona. No, no, no. Uh, but like my kitchen ghost. Um, you can't see her right now. Uh, oh, and he looks like thirty-five degrees off of center where she is. Hi, it's very nice to meet you. <laughs> She's actually a little more left. Chet. Oh, my, there, my left, my left, yeah. my left. Oh, your left. Hi, yeah. how are you? Yeah, and like does like this like. Baymax wave like that's like <laughs> somehow procedure in his brain he's like this place is awesome uh is there a place to like go to sleep I'm I'm done I'm really done I just got out of the hospital too so I could yeah you know. yeah no there's um there's like four or five bedrooms upstairs uh one of them's Fiona's uh Fiona you're the one in the front right you're like the first one off the stairs yeah any anyone that you like um not okay. not Fiona's yeah. The one with like six furnaces running. Yeah, the fine. hot one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's he... space heaters all over. It's a terrible fire hazard. If she wasn't magic, I'd ask her to turn them off, but you know. 
<laughs> he goes upstairs. You hear him like walking around. You hear him like open the window door, then close it immediately. And go, this is so cute. Why does this empty bedroom smell like vampire? Oh, because that one used to belong to a vampire. Oh, okay. So a different one then is okay? Yeah, probably. All right. Thank you. You got it. And you hear like a door <laughs> close, click. You hear like <laughs> on a bed and then just like. <clears throat> oh, that was so hard shit. That's oh, a super that power. poor boy. <laughs> <laughs> with his parachute pants. Oh, with his parachute. I, I like, I don't want to ever judge anybody, but I don't think Chet can see color at all. <laughs> yeah, I think he's fully colorblind because that ain't a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to- totally secretly like loves them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, and also, yeah, too- Suki puts away her pair of parachute pants, yeah. so sort of kicks him under the bed also i mean not for nothing every every time suki he talks about like what he likes about your sculptures he talks about texture and shape he's never once mentioned color to you oh i'm gonna get him some of those magic glasses they're gonna blow his mind oh we have to film it and post it on the youtube and i I I broke the screen (laughs) the youtube (laughs) (laughs) she's also on the facebook um the facebook Uh, all right during this time, Gates would have went to his car to get his bag and stuff and like his first aid kit to heal up Fiona. Um, but I'm going to take the hilt of that blade that Sonny gave me mm-hmm. and kind of like set it on my forearm and then like shape shift my forearm to like uh, the the more Eubanky esque one and then yeah, see the if I can claw like. Kind of thing. Yeah, see if I can form it back and like leave the blade or like the uh not the blade the The hilt hilt in the skin of my arm yeah roll plus weird for me (gasps) yucky because like i'm here for it yeah it was cool but yucky yeah a praying mantis body horror warning sorry Uh, (laughs) oh god uh but at this point you guys should really know what we're about like what do you expect you know seven Seven. <laughs> um yeah you think that it might work with practice and like it, it it feels tight and there's a little bit of it still like poking out but like between the two bones below your wrist and elbow between there there's that space it's a little tight but you're like oh this might work maybe but like it you have not achieved the peak um grossness no uh concealment <laughs> Okay, okay. concealment at this point but yeah it could work you're okay. you're, you're you're not a fully th- fixed three-dimensional object so that that could work okay um seeing it and then like ah, nah, and then i'll take it out and store it away and then come inside with the med kit like i didn't do anything weird in the mm-hmm. back of the car <laughs> i got that med kit for you uh fiona if you're you're ready Oh, thank God. And I, so I, I, I pull my shirt like up over my sh- front of my shoulders and my back is just fucked up. <laughs> I, still have, I still haven't fully healed from our last encounter. So. Yeah. What, how much harm are you at, Fiona? I'm, oh my God. I'm at five. Yeah. Yeah. There's a particularly <laughs> deep wound by her left scapula that's like almost to the bone, but kind of like, yeah, I'm playing like, it off. I, I I love how cool she's it's, been the entire time. She's like, oh, I'm I'm really glad that you can help. Like lift up her shirt. It's like blood. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then a trained medical professional is like, oh good god. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> Why did you uh, say nothing? <laughs> so this will go one of two ways. Either I'll make it worse and you'll mm-hmm. have to sleep it off, or I'll make it a little bit better and you'll sleep off and feel better in the morning. So, uh. Here, here goes everything. Here <laughs> goes nothing. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So the the rolls roll plus cool. Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Do you do, do you have any cool? I mean, I'm cooler than you can't just ask angsty somebody. angel boy <laughs> you over here. Oh, was that what you think? Let's see. Oh. Uh-huh. I got an eight. Oh, that's uh-huh. cute. <laughs> okay. Hey, so what does I mean, that do great. oh sorry i probably should read that uh <laughs> you'd heal I, I, seven to eight um heal to harm or stabilize the injury yeah uh, good so yeah. heal to harm love it uh how's the harm for everybody else 
I'm okay. I'm all right. I have one. Okay. Um, all right, cool. So um, when you guys sleep, everyone will heal too. Um, and if you were unstable, Fiona, you're not unstable anymore. Cool. Um, you got to tell do man. I, do do I still unstable. feal extra too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, okay, you healed okay. four, so you have like one harm. You're still like stiff and things, but you're not bleeding out anymore due to uh, uh, med student Stax's expert care. And I am going to change my shirt because it was covered in blood and smells gross. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I look through Suki's closet. What options do I have? <laughs> Suki, tell her what she's jacket. Won. Uh, It's Abby, all flannels. It's flannels. so many flannels. It's just cowboy boot after cowboy boot. No, um, it, it is sort of a mix between like, uh, like Dolly Parton uh but also like sort of old westy but also like 70s like cool stuff and like bell bottoms it's like it's an eclectic mix to be sure <laughs> does nice. suki not throw away or give away anything not a <laughs> single thing uh, well growing up poor in west virginia i get it yeah okay yeah you know well she also wears her clothes like to death so there's a couple of them that are like is this mesh oh no it's just so see-through <laughs> <laughs> because even it's dead clothing have value <laughs> yeah i use them for my rags you know like you know dust rags and all sorts of stuff what am yeah. i gonna throw away a good shirt for <laughs> i have had this shirt since 1952 i'll have you know <laughs> well i choose the outfit I'll, I'll sleep in it too and then use it in the morning but like the paisley design like red shirt like crop top that you tie at the waist yeah with matching bandana so i'm gonna go Ooh. with 100 we can convince the boys to put on flannels we'll have a, like a team outfit now uh, <laughs> immediately get stacks is like stacks and jibber like no nah, we're not doing that yeah. <laughs> I are not playing that game. Art. I request fan art. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Oh, it's like we're the Partridge family, but it's all plaid. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> now watch the fan art we're going to get is G is a Q also in a flannel, but also tied off at the tummy. Yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> everyone's in their crop tops. Don't put that to the universe. <laughs> it's out there. This is the least <laughs> cursed thing I put out into the universe. I feel like Gates but would totally close. do it, but Q would be like, "Fuck that." <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, oh. Gates is already a shapeshifter. He's just like, ah, form's just a concept. Like literally, it's a concept <laughs> I think of and then I change into it. Um, anyway. All right. Um, so let's say, unless there's anything else, let's say it's morning. Everyone's healed to harm. And uh, you've probably got a good hour, I'm going to guess, before you're supposed to meet Ambrose at the frontier. And Chet is still asleep. So in the in the in the morning, um, Bridget, what do you think Suki like has prepared, if anything, like at like the table or like for breakfast? Mm -hmm. um i think her and rosalita get up pretty early and like you know eggs bacon english muffins jam like homemade preserves and stuff like that you know sort of hearty breakfast <laughs> like she's like well if my babies are gonna go out and save the world at the very least they're gonna do it on a full stomach you know grits mm -hmm. cheesy grits as we're kind of Overnight around oats. as we're Stop. around the table <laughs> kind of um eating and and talking about what's going to come for the day i am going to look over at fiona and say so do you want to fill us in with the that whole thing that happened last night with uh, Ambrose? Well, I have been missing all this time. When I pulled myself from that timeline, I've been gone for 80 years. Which is you, sketch. You looked really nervous. Hashtag after. nervous. <laughs> She's like very about the phones. <laughs> Hashtag was nervous. Hashtag curly fries. TGIF. Hashtag, hashtag. 
so at, at one point in a different time or whatever you were kind of the head of the of the magic department in the obsidian order but i guess in this time you aren't and are not in control and ambrose is your boss yeah and that's how i'll i've always known ambrose as when that time shift happened uh i felt the same did you ever contact the obsidian order when when you got back or was that the first, <laughs> that's first? the thing no i didn't I felt like we had bigger issues at hand, you know? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, might be punished for it. Probably will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just look at her with a, a bit of confusion and kind of um, a sense of worry. Mm that can i can i tell that she's hiding her her real nervous feelings with a smile uh yeah i think so um you could try to roll to manipulate someone if you want to press the issue there are mechanics for hunter to hunter manipulation or influence uh i would like to if yeah. allowed by Anne. bring it on yeah okay. roll plus charm and i'll read you what it does we haven't done this yet and it's really cool So my charm is uh, oh right negative one. Mm -hmm. I rolled Sounds a about right. I rolled a <laughs> solid three. <laughs> oh, on a miss, it's up to that hunter and to decide how badly they're offended or annoyed by the question that Q asked. Um. And you can mark experience if you decide not to do what was asked of you, which is to explain how you really feel. That's what the move says. So what do you say, G-Dub, to try to press her now that we have the mechanic out of the way? Um, I'll say, Fiona, if there's something you want to share you know we're here to listen uh i don't know ambrose too well but i mean he's been helpful but does he make you uncomfortable um i'm actually going to choose to answer it all right i'll do that okay <laughs> um absolutely not that it's a discomfort. I think it's just that odd workplace relationship uh, where he thinks he has all this experience when I frankly don't know if he does or not um, compared to some other people he is in charge of. Um, and frankly, since being with y'all, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like the purpose is a little stronger than it ever has been working for the Obsidian Order. And if I face repercussions, then I do so. Yeah. My choice. And I'll tell you one other element to this as well. And you're not sure how much this goes into play, but you do know that to some degree, Ambrose thinks of your employment as a somewhat of a stewardship to watch over you well to watch over the other guy yeah <laughs> he doesn't relish the idea of you two running willy-nilly around the globe yeah i figure that much yeah but i don't mention that to them that's fine okay well um good to know do you think they may be be able to be willing to help us with this situation considering the urgency of it i think they definitely will it's what they do okay 
And I think we have pieces of the puzzle they don't. And it might get me out of a little bit of trouble. <laughs> so I vote that. <laughs> okay. Suki, do we want to try to start reaching out to those people mentally now or after our meeting with Ambrose? Well, um, we can definitely start reaching out and tell them to start heading to Sunset House at like an appointed time. I don't know how long it'll take our conversation with Ambrose, like an hour, two, ta two hours top. So we can say maybe come by Sunset House at 3 p.m. if you want to help save the world. Um, but yeah, I, I don't mind reaching out now to sort of set up a time with them. Okay, and remember, we definitely shouldn't have Sonny and Ambrose in the same place at one time. Very true. Very true. Very true. Yes. Um, I uh, say we. Reach Chet out walks to downstairs Sonny. to get coffee about this time too. Oh hi, baby. How you feeling? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Here, you you take a you take a seat, and I'm gonna like get up and give him my chair. Um. Well, uh, I think we reach out to Sonny after we talk to Ambrose, just in case it's like a sort of, we can get Ambrose's ducks in a row, and then we'll see how we can handle Sonny. Because I think Sonny would want to help, but like, like I said, it, it's a bad idea for them to be in the same room. Right, okay. Uh, by the way, Chet, um... Mm -hmm. How hard is it for you to stop the connection to those receivers you were talking about? The thing that Zach wears? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So we were going to try and triangulate uh, his location using the signals, but we also could change the source of origin and then figure out where the towers are transmitting from, assuming it's not using my same old network. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I could find it pretty easily and then we could either, you know, disable it or if we really had to, I could, you know, we could, we could just blow up the, the transmitter. So, yeah, we, I mean, we could do that. Is what's, do you know where slash what the transmitter is? I mean, it's probably an antenna put on top of a building somewhere hidden or on the mountain maybe. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I can triangulate and try to figure out where that is because I doubt they're using my same transmitters. I mean, I don't think those are operational anymore, but uh, I mean, they're going to be using the same frequency or something really close. So I just got to figure out where, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, bouncing the signal from because like, so like the, point of origin i'm gonna guess it's someplace really scary and terrible but like th that kind of signal can't go super far and so the way that i did it is i had a couple of repeaters right because you know we were transmitting from the base that's now destroyed and you guys were taking care of the ghouls way up on the petroglose almost your rear rancho and so that's too far so i had repeaters around and so i can find one of those repeaters and 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 blow them up or try to do a counter signal or, or disable it somehow uh but yeah that, i mean that could really work it's just that if he's just close to the main signal his range is severely reduced but i mean if you go after him like Chet, inside that thing Chet, you're gonna have to yeah when you get a chance please find where the signal is coming from sure i can do that thanks and he pulls out like, like a piece of like weird machinery from his pocket of his jams. He's like, yeah, I'll, I'll get on there right now. And sits, sits, sits coffee down, starts walking upstairs. All right. Well, um, anything else you want to, should we talk about a way to, things that we can bring up to keep Fiona with us and not have her taken? Like, is there anything that we can, use as some kind of argument as to why she should stay uh yeah these hands what do you mean take fiona <laughs> <laughs> i i think our argument is strong enough if i still have to go with the obsidian order maybe there's something i can find inside 
that can help. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we don't really have like any anywhere that we could like hide her without they find me. Yeah. Like even Hibbin's old, you know, like the hideaway hole with all the Hibbin stuff in it. Like I'm pretty sure they would know about that. Speaking of which, um, Gates brought up last night about maybe you being able to reach out to certain hunters from the past. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I know that there's, it's more complicated than that because if you could always reach who you wanted, you'd be able to reach him. Yeah. Um, well, with, with our friend, it's harder to reach him because he ain't in the normal spot, you know? Um, he's not dead with, in the traditional sense. Yeah, like, it's a different frequency. He's somewhere else. Um, but other, you know, hunters from the past and stuff, I could reach them because I know where to find them, if that makes sense. Also, Suki, being dead and being a ghost are two different things. Yeah. Yeah. So, I wish I could get him, because he'd be awful helpful right now. He's, you know, even though he was a little impetuous and, you know, being Riley, he, um, he'd be really helpful right now. And when you say that, Q will say, I actually wasn't talking about Riley, Suki. I was talking about your husband. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where's the D? <laughs> yeah, well, that that's a given, you know. I, um, Like, I haven't tried, but like I said, if I knew where to reach him, I would. Okay. Do do we want to try to reach out to um, the past dead hunters after the meeting today? I think I so. I okay. I don't know if there's like a a peak time for you to mm -hmm. to make contact with certain things so oh which an hour um yeah not really most of the like it's so funny i have never reached out to ghosts as much as i have recently <laughs> uh oh most of the time they come find me and i can't do nothing about it so yeah i think after the meeting is fine we can call a you know dinner meeting or something we'll see if i can get them okay is Sounds anyone soon. on the call list for before the meeting uh i think we could grab eddie before the meeting just okay. to have him set up with chat if that sounds good for everybody mm -hmm. okay um, anybody else <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Dave, is, Dave is still healing from being ate by a troll. Leave that yeah. man alone. Leave <laughs> that man alone. He's Dave is locked in the psych ward. The, yeah, I can, I can just imagine that psychic call right now. I'm sorry, Dave's not available right now. <laughs> yeah, Please like us on Facebook and don't leave a message. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever leave a message. Never call this ever again. Um, let's see. Maybe. Uh. We can try uh, Doris Payne before the meeting. Sure. Um, and I feel like the werewolf family might be still sleeping because they're like night owls. <laughs> or like yeah, night they're, owls. they're sort of nighttime creatures. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's those two are, are good. Okay. 
at Andor's. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Uh... Um, yeah, I, I'm going to say because you guys know Eddie so well and he's in town, you're able to contact Eddie no problem. And yeah. after... I have been in that brain before. Yeah, you yeah. have. Too, too, <laughs> too often. Too often. We got to chill Too many out. times. Okay, you were not the worst offender for that poor boy. Um, <laughs> uh, after being freaked out for a moment, you also kind of hear him whisper in his own brain, this is so cool. Uh, and he agrees to head to Sunset House uh, round three. Um, you have a harder time getting hold of Doris. You feel like she is not within the range of your telepathy. Mm. You're familiar Keeper. enough, but she's too far away. Keeper, yes. Would you allow me to try to be Sookie's battery, like we've done in the past, and we're all linked to kind of try to amplify her reach? Um, I would, but I'm going to tell you right now, she is not even in this time zone. Okay. I think that might be a little outside. Okay. Yeah. The now. Scope. Yeah, the scope. Now, I mean. But like I said before, you could just go to her if you wanted to, mm -hmm. but I don't know if that's what you want to do. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to see if I can just meet her. Uh, wish me luck. And I'm gonna go up to my. I'm gonna walk like a regular person. I'm gonna walk up to my room and get out of my jammies and like put on my clothes before. I make the trip. Okay. And anyone else, anything before he goes to visit Doris Payne? Uh, Wherever she may be? Miss Suki, did we get a bead on where Avi is currently? Uh, no, I, I, I don't think we did. Um, But Avi's a machine, so I don't know if I can... Hmm. I don't know if I can... Tell telepathy back in there. I don't know if I'd be able to read his mind since his mind is mechanical. Okay. Well, I mean, we're trying to keep him away from Maxwell, right? Mm hmm. But Maxwell since... has him. Okay. So. Yeah, he snatched him. If I see Avi, the first thing I'm going to do is grab him and just like go down just take them as far away as possible in the earth 100 percent. that sounds like a great idea hashtag swoop <laughs> yeah <laughs> because avi is both a person and an object all right um uh, before, before i make the trip i want to do one last thing Keeper. okay let me know when i don't know if everyone is I, I think I'm ready. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm going to uh, walk back downstairs after I have everything on. And I'm going to look at Fiona. Fiona, Doris Payne is uh, known as being very crafty and has lots of layers of protection magic. I'm not, clearly I'm not going to look for a fight or anything. But she did summon a demon once to attack me. Would you be able to give me extra any extra layers of defense before I I go I try to go see her? Yeah, I definitely could. Um, can I cast a like magic suit <laughs> where it protects him from any sort of physical damage from magic? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and roll use magic plus weird. Okay. Uh, Q, are you sure you're going to do this by yourself? She knows me. She's uh, in our short time we've made some heavy history and I think taking more than just me might be seen as aggressive. I got an 11. Excellent. Um, yeah, so with an 11, I don't think there's any glitch. It just works. Um, yeah, so the effect is what? You're going to basically... If and if she tries to cast anything against him, like whether to teleport him away or to like attack him, that it would just like slide off of him like jello. Okay. 
yeah Dude. uh it it works and there's like just for a moment almost Uh-oh. like a uh like a, just a second layer of like glowing white skin uh over like maybe an inch over his uh kind of silhouette and then it fades but you know it's still there i'll tell you this even though it worked perfectly it'll last a really long time but after it absorbs a certain number of incursions it will deplete itself so it's not perfect but give you enough time to get away or fight back thanks fiona and you got paracletus with you right he's always with me okay well don't hesitate to you know bamf him out if she gets you know when she you know if she bamfs out her like wrath demon Okay. Do you want to connect with me so you can hear everything that I hear? Oh, sure. Yeah, if I can, if that works frequency wise, right? Um, if I can't, if I can't get to Dora's pain for her mind because she's too far away, will you? Will that? I don't know. Let's I mean, we out. could always try. Let's try. Yeah. Clink. I open <laughs> myself to Suki's powers. Great. Awesome. There is a connection. All right. This is the most like prepared you've ever been for a jump in your life. Right? <laughs> for, just there like, had to wow. be one. It all comes down to this. <laughs> Does it? You're just, you know what? You're just scared. All right, go ahead. <laughs> I, um, you see for a moment, my golden wings of light come out from behind my back and in mid flap, disappear. And I am aiming to be the to the right and maybe 15 feet away okay. from Doris Payne. You and you're in a um a modest house. The air out the air is humid. The light coming from the st- uh, windows streaming in indicates that it's afternoon, even though where you just came from was 11 o'clock, 11.30. And you can, and this is like a just a very small, quaint, kind of oldish house, nothing to be excited about, uh, and kind of smells like mothballs a little bit. And you can hear a television in the next room on it's um it's let's make a deal wayne brady and as you kind of creep through the house get closer there's someone sitting in the chair watching tv but you're behind them i'm gonna say with the most passive voice and calm voice that i can hey doris who's that and she kind of turns, and a 90-year-old Doris Payne leans over to look. Is that you? What you doing here? I thought that I thought that chapter of my life was over. That was literally a couple of days ago. Why? What happened to you? Well, let's come put up a chair. I pull up a chair. It looks like you found a way to make your way back. Yeah, it uh, it wasn't easy, but we got here. Well, I didn't. You left me in 1973. I don't know how you did it. I never figured out what that spell was. What? I took it as a good that I wasn't dead. I didn't know. I didn't know that you that you came with us. I we didn't see you when we arrived. I'm sorry. I, I looked for you for quite some time. Where'd you end up? Well, when we got blasted back to 1945, we were in Albuquerque for some time. 45? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, you must have found a way back. You'd be older than me. And after that, we got sent to some kind of in-between place. And then we got blasted back here. What time were you? Well, I got dropped off in Albuquerque in 73. And uh, all of my contacts either didn't know me yet, weren't born yet. But uh, I found my way in life. And Q, you can look down as she kind of like puts her like crosses her legs. And she has a police monitoring anklet on her uh, ankle. And she sees you looking at it and looks at you and says, I'm very good at doing one thing, magical or otherwise. Thief's always going to be a thief, I guess. I guess. Old Doris, uh, uh, something's happening in Albuquerque. Where are we right now? Welcome to Atlanta. Atlanta. Well, uh, I'm sure you remember Maxwell. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard that name in a long time. That son of a... Oh. Lucky you. He's been on our minds for a long time. So, I guess we have caught up, haven't we? You know, yeah. he's a bad customer. You should really be careful. That's actually why I'm here. I came to ask for some help, if you're able. Uh, I know that you got that Ring of Solomon for him. Um, we're looking to cut off his source of power. And we're making a team to attack in different areas and he starts laughing <laughs> you want me to go fight some big bad creepy guy in Albuquerque son Not I've lived two fighting. lifetimes <laughs> I'm done but I put that life behind me not only am I am not the woman that I used to be she points at the anklet bracelet. It's like, there's this dang thing. And I would miss my stories. Well, how about this? There's still a way that you can help. What can you... He was a customer of yours. What can you tell us about him? Well, why not? He wanted that ring that I stole. Not the mm -hmm. one that almost killed me, the other one. Mm -hmm. Because he was... When, when she says that, the, when she says the ring that almost killed her... This one. You gotta show it to her? Yeah, she <laughs> hops up and just like... Zoom, and like, oh, like, osteoporosis over, shaking gnarled hands, and a bubble goes around. She's like, no, 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 Sam, no, no, doing, boy? no, 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 no. <laughs> Like I said, the whole thing with us, to me, it literally happened maybe a couple of days ago. Time is weird, and that's why I still have it. It's, I, I'm, it, you're fine. We're fine. We're fine. She says back down, give me a heart attack, turn in my I'm, AA chip. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I haven't cast magic like that in years. You still got Scared it. The living daylights. Mm. Still got it. But go on, what you were saying about Maxwell. Maxwell, before I was interrupted, Sorry. had it in his mind that Sonny was going to give him trouble. Mm -hmm. So he said he wanted him off the board. So we got that ring. I checked it out before I gave it to him. It's Pretty powerful. Let one of the uh, other occupants out just in case before I turned it over. 
and uh, gave it to him. Now, you know what that ring can do, right? Yes. I do. All right. As his insurance policy, that Sonny ain't going to come out of sabbatical and take the screws to him. See, there's more than one way to move a piece off the board. And that's how he neutralized Sonny. Gotcha. Sonny goes after him, he just gets sucked up by that ring. Now, I do feel a mite bad about sticking that Oni on you, but he owed me a favor for releasing him. So I guess we can let bygones be bygones. No harm, no foul. All right, just don't be careful with that other ring. Q. You really just keep it in your pocket like that? I forgot about it. It's, it's been it's it's been it's been. Let's just say that. Don't teach youngsters nothing about magic no more. Back in my day, well, I guess this is back in my day. Never mind. Before I go, this ring of breaking bonds, we both know it's dangerous for someone to put on and keep and keep on for different reasons. Is there a way that I could utilize this to help us without harming myself? What do you have in mind? <sighs> to be honest, I don't know. I don't know. Well, before you try anything, you better know. Magic works on intent. And I don't know if it would be a good power source. It seems to take more than it gives. Maybe as a focus. But you better know what you want to do. In my head, I just say to Suki, you got all that? Do I have all that? It's spotty. Like, you know him really well, but that is a range. That's yeah. 1,700 miles some odd. Can I hear it as well, or just Suki can? Um... I don't think it was a whole party line. I think it was just Q just and, no. and yeah. I I think she would have only focused on Q because like yeah, he, part, he's going a, far away. Yeah, because a party line would definitely reduce the range, right? Um, yeah. like a real party line. Um, yeah. and it's like a Spotify, you know, yeah. account. I I, I, I think in this range, uh, Suki, you know, you can feel his mind, so you know he's alive and he's not like you know being choked to death or something but yeah there's not a communication thing like the the cell the the, the cell phone knows the tower is there but there's no communication yeah i'm yeah. gonna stand up excuse me i'm gonna stand up and um kind of put out my hand for a handshake well doris i i appreciate all the help and i'm glad that you found your way i appreciate that cue does she shake my hand? So, and she shakes your hand, and it's we both teleport. I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm calm. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> and that's <laughs> where we end our episode. <laughs> I kind of love that. That might be real. I know you're joking, but I'm all. But really, though. <laughs> Like the cops are like gonna be looking for Doris Payne because she just disappeared from <laughs> no, okay. from her house arrest. She didn't even cut the bracelet off. She oh. just teleported to Albuquerque. Okay, real talk. Do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Find out next week here on the Duke City Chronicles. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Let's call our winner in the chat. Congratulations. Uh, if you won, please get us out in the Discord. Just message me and we'll get those dice out to you. Please join us next week. Right here on twitch.tv uh, slash fable42, Friday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern, uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. Atlanta's a weird place. <laughs>
Let's keep it that way. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>